operating as YouTuber, you have entered the world of electrifying, like gaming and streaming. And here is your host, all the way from the internet, Sly885. Sup YouTube, it's your boy Sly885. All right, I'm just getting started with this. I'm trying out these new hotkeys. So yes, I got, I'm using hotkeys now for my React videos and I got something I have to report that actually is really frustrating to me and I probably can't do anything about it because I'm just a small YouTuber and my work, my words and my feelings don't matter. So uh, still getting used to these hotkeys. Let me just show you real quick. Let me make sure, yeah, okay. So I got a copyright strike over a video of mine that actually was doing really well. And I'm not sure when I'm gonna upload those videos, those Sonic videos, but yeah, this one actually did me well. Look at that, 594 views, which is good for my standards. That's even better than this video. It gave me a lot of watch time, like I think it was 17 hours or something, which is pretty good for my for my standards, but somebody um, Who uploaded the previous version of that video? Decided that It actually belonged to him even though technically it didn't All he did was use footage that already existed from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Use that as a means to take down that video of mine now um I already tried to um, counter uh, to counter the strike. Um, YouTube's response uh, was pretty quick, uh, surprisingly, and uh, said that I didn't give a good enough reason, I guess. So I think it's a lost cause. It's YouTube. What are you going to do about it? So I'll make a new one that doesn't... That, didn't, that doesn't involve downloading that guy's video. And if he still claims it, which I don't think he would in this case, but if he does, then yeah, I'd have, every, I'd have every right. Besides, he doesn't even own the original footage. He just happens to have uploaded the video. Um, that'd be like if somebody upload, um, re-uploaded one of my videos, or one of my uh, React videos or something, and I claim the copyright on it even though I'm reacting to someone else's video. I can't claim, I mean, that would be just cr crazy if I claimed a copyright on that. I mean, yeah, I uploaded the video, but it was me uploading myself reacting to somebody else. <laughs> you know, it'd be like that. It'd be different if like you upload a video I actually did make, like I like the videos I made a decade ago where I, I'm not talking about my gaming footage on this channel. You re-upload that, I mean, what, what, do you, what am I gonna do, really? But like, what is it going to matter anyway? Uh, unless it helps my channel somehow. But, like, if you re-upload a video of mine that I recorded ten years ago, a decade ago, which you'll see a lot of these videos in my uh, comedy compilation I had uploaded last year. But these videos I actually shot with, with my own camera, with my friends, and recorded, did all the editing and uploading. Uh, if someone else uploaded that... To their one of those to their channel, then yeah, I'd be like, whoa, that is my material. I actually recorded it. It's actually footage that I made. But what he's uh, striking my video down for is not the same thing. He may have recorded the footage, although I highly doubt that. I mean, who's going to have the time to just record all that footage? Um, he probably just down um, used a bunch of footage from like uploaded from uh, replays converted into videos that were uploaded to various YouTube channels and then put them in his video. And now he's claiming it, it's his video just because I used the footage. I mean, I just did the same thing he did. Anyways, I've been talking about this for too long. So I'm actually going to drop it. There's nothing, I, there seems to be nothing I can do about it. I sent him an email. I don't know if he's going to respond to it. I will admit I I was I did kind of show a temper in that email but at the but I mean I kind of had every reason to he technically doesn't own the footage anyways let's get to it 
new Scott the Waz video. Let's react. And yeah, if Scott the Waz claimed a copyright on this video, then he'd have every right to. It is his video. I'm just reacting to it. I'm not claiming ownership to his video. It's just myself reacting to it. Although I guess because it's me reacting to it, it's considered fair use. I, I, react, are react videos actually fair use? That's kind of crazy to think about. There's so many reaction channels and then now I'm thinking about that. <laughs> Shit. Uh oh, are a bunch of channels about to get destroyed now? Including mine, I hope not. Anyway. I mean, there's that medical doctor, of course, I mean, he shows a little bit of footage, but anyway. And the uh, lawyer, uh, legal eagle, but never mind. All right. And there we go. Let's finally get this started. I've been talking long enough, and uh, my battery, I have limited battery life, so let's not waste it. <clears throat> let's make sure everything's A-OK. -okay. Yeah, everything's OK. Hey, all Scott here. This is getting old. I may have finally <laughs> stopped getting robbed two weeks ago, but I just started getting robbed three weeks ago. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I'm gonna make some calls and get to the bottom of this. A bank? The bank? A bank? A bank. Yeah, I was a wondering bank. if I could take out a loan to assign a hit. Uh, let me check. Hey, he was a judge before. Are you sure your name isn't you? No. Yeah, we repossess most of your belongings. We are a bank after all. Oh, thank God. I wasn't robbed. Yeah. So can I take out a loan to repossess to repossess? No, you repossess your stuff for a reason. We asked if you had any debts and you just wrote SOS. Yeah. Listen, I've seen your service. How's he talking about me? We'll send you a care package. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Scott the Waz will what? Uh, I'm... After all. Oh, thank God. I wasn't robbed. Yeah. So, can I take out a loan to repossess the repossessed? No, you repossess your stuff for a reason. We asked if you had any debts and you just wrote SOS. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah. I've seen your services a long time. Scott the Waz, I will talk about stupid Nintendo games. For stupid Nintendo games, for hire. We'll send you a care package okay. to help you get back on your feet, but until then, <laughs> sir, this is a Domino's. Oh, you said this was a bank. Yeah. A knife thing. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Domino's headquarters. The classics. Games you may not yeah. play all the time, but the idea you can play them on your current system and pull them out whenever and wherever you are. Oh, uh, yeah, I love playing and that. And honest to God, what's... The, um... I was first introduced to the Mario Bros. Arcade thanks to Super Mario Advance on the GBA back in 2001, and... Love it. I mean, be, um, <coughs> the controls are much more improved. The jumping is way better. In the original Marbles Arcade, which I actually have played since then, I've uh, I've seen a few different cabinets that have the Mario Bro uh, arcade cabinets that have the Marbles Arcade included. The jumping is uh, when you go from playing it on Super Mario Advance to playing it on the arcade original arcade. It, it's crazy because of the jump controls. Like you could just go whoop. Whoop, the those you know platforms but on the uh, arcade you actually have to before you jump you have to face the direction you plan to go and then jump and you have to do that every time you can't jump and then turn that direction in midair <laughs> um, yeah so it's a little it's a little more um, what's the word well, it's, 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 it takes some getting used to and Until you do actually get used to how it plays, though, then you're fine. But, yeah, it's such a great improvement in the later games. Better to with an ice climber. This is a lineup <laughs> of games released for the Game Boy Advance throughout 2004. Titled yeah. the classic NES series. Old school games for the Nintendo Entertainment System yes. re-released on GBA for 20 bucks a pop. You can beat 20. that deal. Probably should have been better, lower than that. This is one of Nintendo's first that. major instances of really pushing nostalgia for that NES era, releasing uh. these games alongside a special edition Game Boy Advance SP modeled after the system. Same yep. thing in Japan. They released a model of the handheld designed after the cool. Japanese NES, the Famicom. <laughs> Look how tiny this box is. It's adorable. <laughs> I think the North American variant wins in the handheld aesthetic departments, mm. though. Yeah. Yeah, it does mimic the Famicom, but oh boy, ketchup yeah. and mayonnaise. Now, Basically, the Famicom yeah. released in 1983. 
Atari. The NES released in 1985. All of this happened in 2004, so I think they were trying to break even for the system's 20th anniversary. They were probably just rounding up. Yeah, I'm 24. Okay. No, I always round up, so to be more precise, I'm two. I'm for one I'm sort of critical of Nintendo's over-reliance on nostalgia sometimes, but I'm their target uh. demographic for this because no matter what they do, if it's 8-bit, I don't think, I just clap. Like, man, you're really pushing <laughs> things here. They had the nerve to sell Ice Climber for $20. Yeah, come and on, $20 really? $20 was cheaper than regular Game Boy Advance games, so this isn't a regular Game Boy Advance game. It's Ice Climber. But yeah. this NES Game Boy Advance SP is so cool. The outside is like it the is system. Pretty cool. The inside is like the controller. It's even textured like an actual <laughs> NES gamepad. Yeah, Okay, so I really cool. like this design, but it just reminds me of the people who wear NES t-shirts. I'm awkward. The Game Boy Micro <laughs> also got a special edition themed around the Famicom, this time the controller. This one yeah. released in 2005 in both Japan and the US, and I think this yeah, design is both as piece. It is gorgeous. Though this was released specifically in commemoration of the 20th anniversary with real ties to the classic NES series. Well, 12 games were released yeah. under the classic NES series label, with most hitting store shelves on June 2nd, 2004, alongside the special edition SP, plus a few more later on October 25th, 2004. Most of them were Nintendo developed and published titles. We got the Metroid one is pointless. There's no reason. I, I'm not saying that because I, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know how I feel about the original Metroid NES. I don't like it, but I'm not saying it's pointless because of that. I'm saying it's pointless because um, on the Game Boy Advance, you can get Metroid Zero Mission, which is uh, like a remaster of the original Metroid for NES. Way better than the original Metroid for sure. But you also have the option from that same cartridge that you play Metroid Zero Mission on, you also have the option to select the original Metroid on that. So if you're going to get the classic NES series, don't get the original Metroid. Get Metroid Zero Mission because it has original Metroid on it. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Excite Bike, Ice Climber, Dr. Mario, Metroid, and Zelda yeah, 2. No point there, in Metroid. There were also a few third party games licensed in Nintendo for release okay. in the series Castlevania, Batman, nice. Bomberman, Xevious, and Castlevania. Huh. Aesthetically like speaking, back these then? are really fun <laughs> to put all next to each other. They all follow a basic black design, reminiscent of the original black box Nintendo. It's just so weird to see what Bomberman looked like on his first game. That's what he looked like back then? My goodness. Releases. However, most of these games didn't originally so have the black box design. So generic in comparison to what it looks like now. With a few sprites and the big title and that iconic font. So Nintendo gave them a black box design. They cropped their box arts and put them on black. That's <laughs> a little lame. I think it would have been fun to activate design <laughs> covers as if these games had the black box design from back in the day or something. Yeah, Rather maybe. Just putting the cover on a black background. I mean, at this point, you already maybe, have yeah. a top of the box saying classic NES series. You could have just used the original box art, not cropped, and everything would have still looked uniform and nice. Oh, but no. There you, you just go. have to put more effort in to make it look like you put less effort in. The boxes <laughs> do feel like mini NES game boxes, so I'll give them uh, that. That's a good way fact, to descriptions and screenshots are unique compared to the NES originals, mentioning how the NES classic is back. Finally, play Pac-Man on the go for the 20th time ever. But they still feel very genuinely charming and retro. Even if they don't cost a lot on eBay right now, you still want to treat them with respect. Most of these releases were born to die being a collectible. The next big indicator of a classic NES series title is the cartridge itself. Now, most people would probably go, what's the difference? And to that I say, <laughs> invest in Neon. Classic NES GBA games are a lighter tone of gray, the exact same That's lighter funny. tone of gray as legitimate NES game cartridges. They put so much damn detail in all of this, this truly feels like they legitimately cared. Mm. Turns out they did these few things just to barely reach that bar. All right, so let's try <laughs> these out. First up, we can't go wrong with a little bit of Super Mario Brothers. Unless you use it as insulin. Look at that, in all its glory. You know, I can't understate how amazing it was to finally get these games in an uncompromised portable form. Put a D in front of that. So those yeah, are Super Mario, Mario looks on the weird. NES, on the Game Boy Ish. Advance. However, fun and quirk of the Game Boy Advance was the screen size. It's not 4x3, it's not widescreen. I consider it husky. NES games were all 4x3, so Nintendo had two options. Either put black bars on the sides like a Samaritan or embrace chaos. So they filled the screen. Good Mario's for head. If they did, the group of people who play retro games stretch their smoothing like it filters is. on, minimized with borders, well, there's no telling what they'd do. Our nation <laughs> separated. They didn't just simply stretch the games to fill the screen, though. They meticulously yeah, removed unnecessary pixels to effectively fit the game yeah, in that... resolution. <laughs> Thus, 
whatever the his piece head. is. You have yeah. to give them credit. They wanted to see these games fill the screen, and they did it without simply stretching them, though they still look a little wonky. But hey, let's see if I can compare this to similar releases. Here we have Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on Game Boy Color. It's they didn't similar do that. version of Super Mario Bros. you can play on the they go. Just so here's the, the advantage you get with the classic NES series. They didn't just zoom into the screen. With right. Deluxe, sometimes you can't see what's above you, yeah, behind that's you, in front annoying, of you, because yeah. they just zoomed in to make everything viewable on such a tiny screen. So yeah. the GBA version is a bit more playable. But you're missing the calendar. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. Deluxe was a new deluxe version of Mario 1. It included yeah. extra mode, the save feature. Mario 2 from that Japan was, was included. Fun. Tons of little... Yeah, the, um... It wasn't until, like, decades later, but my, uh, friend John and I, we actually played the multiplayer on, uh... The multiplayer racing mode on Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. It was a lot of... It's a lot of fun, you know? I mean, as soon as somebody dies, though... Basically, the race is won <laughs> for the other person, but it's 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 still a lot of fun uh, trying to race to the finish instead of having to race against a boo that is generally slower than you but goes through walls. You racing it, it's Mario racing Luigi. Bonus features that I just adore. Like, yeah, those are fun necessary? bonus features. No, yeah. and that's what's fun about it. Yeah. The classic NES series Super Mario <laughs> that's Brothers. That's true. It's just Super Mario Brothers. There's nothing else to it. And that's what the classic NES series was. They weren't remakes. They were, by and large, the original NES games. No frills that's for your true. Game Boy yeah. games. I mean, pressing L and R brings us this menu. Ooh, damn, everybody. Play. Let's talk about the weather app. Well, Super Mario Brothers <laughs> is a classic game. It's one that'll never that's get random. old and one that's great to have at a moment's notice. He's it in plays Ohio. well Tucson's here. It's in Arizona. It's possible to play the game in some capacity on the Game Boy Advance before. This version is much more tailor-made for the handheld while also being more true to the original. Of course, it had to be a part of the classic NES series. Now, is it worth the $20 MSRP? Well, for like $10 more, you could get any of the Mario Advance series, which were yeah. fully fleshed out remakes and ports of the other 2D Mario games. Yeah, some that were... Levels, mechanics, modes, the side game of Mario Brothers. Yeah. It's a tough situation because the entire gimmick of these releases is that, oh, it's the original NES game on a smaller cart. <coughs> Honestly, making these collections or something would have taken away from that collectability, I guess. Mm, $20? Probably would have been a better I mean, deal, though. On the bare minimum, you can price a physical game without discounts or price cuts. Mm. I'd say this one is a bit iffy on if it makes sense for 20 At the time, you could definitely find a copy of Super Mario Bros. Okay. Deluxe for less, which had more features. Plus, back in 2004, I think our nation was more used to screen crunch like this. <laughs> I put this in the middle on the worth 20 scale. Uh, next up, Ice Climber. I think Nintendo re-released this for a tax break. Ice Climber is an iconic uh, NES They classic. released it for... They released it to justify including Ice Climbers in Super Smash Bros. Melee. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason. It, you know, because that is the only game he was in, but he's a great character in, the Sma in Smash Bros. So, you know, um, kind of like how uh, is there? They, they should make a new Ice Climber game. Just make one that's more in depth, I guess. That'd be fun, because they did make a new, you know, Kid Icarus after Hit was included in Brawl. Um, you never know. Sure. Most of its appeal comes from the character's inclusion in Smash Bros. Yeah, exactly. Which is 100% exactly. why the game was put in this series. Yeah. Smash Bros. Melee did a number to the interest in various franchises. Yeah, Fire Emblem. Convinced Nintendo to bring Fire Emblem outside of Japan. So exactly. So they decided to re-release Ice Climber. Uh, I, I, the, my first experience is with that Fire Emblem game on the left on GBA, as it was the first one to be released internationally. Before playing that, I played Advance Wars and Advance Wars 2. When I played Fire Emblem, I realized that it controls pretty much the same. Except difference is it's medieval and it's characters, not units. And uh, you lose a character, you can't get him back. <laughs> you know, you can't just build up your forces like in Advanced Wars. It's it's awesome. Um, I didn't play very much of the Sacred Stones. I got that way later uh, when the DS was king, and I just didn't really play it very much. Um, but I wish I did because it was uh, from what I played of it early on, it was pretty cool. The Fire Emblem game I liked the most was Path of Radiance for the GameCube, which is the one that brought Ike into the franchise, and as a result of its popularity, uh, was included in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and has been in Smash Bros. since then. Um, and uh, I also played Radiant Dawn on Wii, which was, wow, unforgivingly hard. It was, like, literally meant to be a continuation of Path of Radiance. <laughs> Anyways, a better continue. For that very same reason. 
can't wait for that return on investment. The original Ice Climber isn't a <laughs> terrible game. It's just a bad one. I think there's Whoa. a bit of merit to this game. Like, the controls are absolutely atrocious. But yeah, I think that's it's kind of hard to jump in to this. the game more challenge. But you can select any level I from enjoy the, start, the game, so it's like, actually. Who cares about the challenge? There, I beat the game. The two Paramo <laughs> was seemingly removed that remained in Super Mario Brothers. But the multiplayer <laughs> in that game is just past the Game Boy when you die. But alas, you have to connect another Game Boy Advance to have the option appear. Good. For yeah. $20. And what's weird about Ice, uh, about Ice Climber compared to their to the ice climbers and super smash bros is I, I i've when i first downloaded this to the wii a decade ago and played it with my then best friend uh we'll get uh, I'll, i won't get to it. I, I might be seeing him again i just haven't seen him in years and i stopped being his friend but anyways uh this was before that happened um we looked up the instructions and it said that you just gotta try to reach the top before the opponent. If you re if you reach high enough, you'll make the screen go up so much that it will kill the person who's at the bottom if they're not going up fast enough. And I'm just like, wait, the objective is to get is just to beat the other person, even causing the screen to kill them. That what the hell? You know, because in in the Smash Brothers they work together. They're 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 teammates. Like what the hell? Colors. No, hell, I'll pay you $20 to stay away. And as it's a charm and a place in Nintendo history, I do sort of like it in some respects. Its core gameplay is fairly enjoyable. It's I just find it the fun. Damn controls. You do realize, uh, because he sticks his hammer up when he jumps, you could jump into that bird and it would knock him down, right? Come on, Scott. Man, but as nice as I'm willing to be like about this, this game, let's be fair. This game, as its standalone Game Boy Advance release, that! <laughs> This should be nothing more than a side game in a bigger game. The Mario Brothers sure Arcade again. and the Mario Advance releases. And I think what yeah. stings the most here is the fact that Nintendo already re-released Ice Climber as an e-reader card set for the Game Boy Advance. Oh yeah, so this was God. a major piece of criticism against the classic <laughs> NES series. The fact that a good handful of these games, well, they were already on the Game Boy Advance via e-reader cards. That's so, so lame. Let's be reasonable here, the e-reader was an accessory for the GBA that nobody heard of until two sentences ago. You'd scan cards to unlock <laughs> goodies and games, to play games right off the yeah, cards. I've heard Thus, of it. Some NES games were re-released via. I've heard of it through like other videos, like did you know gaming and some other stuff. I think. Method for five bucks a pack. Of course, you already okay. had to own the e-reader, which costs forty dollars in of itself. Keep mm. the e-reader plugged in the entire time and hopelessly Ooh. scan five cards in a row. The opportunity cost may outweigh things here. It's a little unfair mm. to be like, oh well, you sold Ice Climber for five dollars, Nintendo. Why is it twenty now? Because you already had to own an e-reader. Scanning cards was clunky compared to just inserting a card. Yeah. Just buying the classic e-reader was game forty. Is a so. Option here. Doesn't mean the game is worth 20. Excite Bike! <laughs> now, this has more value than Ice Climber, in my opinion. I think everybody Excite likes Excite Bike. Either yeah. that or nobody cares enough to put energy into hating it. Wow, you hate <laughs> Excite Bike? You fucking badass! <laughs> well, it is the same game as before. You can save your custom build tracks now. It's That's not good. Bad That's good. Game. You don't get a ton of save slots like you do in the 3D Classics remake for 3DS, but well, it's a nice yeah, it update game so. operated on NES. This was another game that was already on e-reader card, so that was an issue. You can save your custom tracks in that version, so I finally understand the value of $15. Excite Bike's a better game than Ice Climber, though, and has more replay value. I'd say it's in the middle on the $20 scale. Donkey Kong. Plain ass, old ass, Donkey Kong ass, Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, it's not the arcade version, it's the NES version. What did you think we've been talking about? Donkey Kong's always fun to replay, but I mean... <laughs> It's just three levels, one screen each. And the mm. NES version, while well, perfectly fine, it cuts out one of the stages from the arcade game, the Pie Factory. So it's like, yeah. you, sure you can use this game to just try to go for the high score, but wouldn't that feel more rewarding if you had the true arcade version in the palm of your hands? Uh, you could practice and practice and practice on Game Boy and show up to the arcade, get the high score and in tandem laid. Ah, this is just a way to play Donkey Kong on the go. But at that point, just get Donkey Kong for Game Boy. Yeah, that, original arcade that game one's was remade, awesome. And 90 plus puzzle platformer levels afterwards, yes, and that yes. game cost around like four bucks in 2004. Plus yeah. Donkey Kong yeah. was another. God, Donkey Kong for Game Boy is such an incredible game. I've mentioned this before, and I guess I'll mention it again. Uh, I wish they'd make more of those. The only other one I know of is Mario vs. Donkey Kong, the first one, because after that. All the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games involved the minis. And I liked Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis. It's the first Mario game I know of that you could actually make custom levels. And it came out for the DS in like 2005 or two, no, 2006 or something. Maybe 2007, I forget. And uh, it's a blast to play. But um, I, I'd love to see more in the style of 
you know, Donkey Kong Game Boy. It doesn't have to, you know, look be 8-bit. Like, you know, make a modern one with HD graphics, but, you know, make it be a, a new one of those kind of Donkey Kong games where there's all the puzzle platforming. Because the puzzle platforming is awesome. And, and the gymnastic movement of Mario's jumps, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure many people think that the backflip Mario does or uh, some of his higher jumps he does in Super Mario 64 were started in Super Mario 64. No, some of his jumps were started in the Donkey Kong Game Boy game. So, yeah, it's it's awesome. Anyways, let's continue. Pre-reader release. Only we could have re-released Donkey Kong Classics, which was Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. in one NES cartridge. That would have made sense. That would have made it's sense. It's the original authentic one NES game, now on your GBA, but, like, come on. $20? I love the original Donkey Kong, but this is pushing it. Frankly, I don't think it's worth it. The Legend of Zelda. See, this is one of those games they forced the black box design on. Like, yeah, it looks fine and standardized with the rest have of the done series, that. but would it have really looked that out of place with the original box art they design done just that. with the red header on top? They this was the that, first yeah. time Zelda 1 was available portably, and it's an incredibly solid version. They Good. They went in and fixed up some text here in the beginning <laughs> that was in a dire need of an editor in the original. <laughs> I think Zelda works great yeah. as a handheld game. If this was your first time playing, it can take a while to get through if you don't immediately know yeah. where to go. And I think portability helps as you can kind of chip away at it. I would have loved to see a remake of this kick. game on Game Boy Advance, a la how Nintendo remade Metroid 1 as Metroid Zero Mission. But for $20, yeah. I think this was a... Which, like I said, if you if you have Metroid Zero Mission, you can also play the original Metroid in there. So there's really no point of the Metroid classic Stand series. release. You would definitely get your money's worth out of this game. Yeah. Until two years later when Nintendo re-released it on Wii's virtual console for $5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so those were the Nintendo games on June 2nd. <laughs> what about the third parties? I am sorry I asked. Bomberman by Hudson. Now, Nintendo still published these Game Boy Advance versions, and I'm sure they developed these ports, but this was always a Hudson soft property. Well, yeah. Bomberman has always been there for most Nintendo platforms. I'm sure some yeah. people think of him as a Nintendo character. Hell, he's been in Nintendo games with Nintendo characters. Yes, so yes. this makes sense. On paper, one of the defining elements of Bomberman games is the multiplayer mode, oh, and it's okay, not right. behind a link cable. It's just not here. It's just, just the single player mode stupid. from the NES game. It's fine, oh, but you do that's... realize how many ways there were to play Bomberman on Game Boy Advance, right? I mean, most Bomberman games are kind of interchangeable. A Bomberman game is a Bomberman game. Some are yeah. better than others, but at the end of the day, most will give you your Bomberman fix. So it's like yeah. all of these exist, you know? And Bomberman's known for multiplayer. You take it out of the equation, and the main game is okay, but it's yeah. so strange to me that they went to all this trouble to preserve elements of these other titles, but strip <laughs> Bomberman of its headlining feature. Honestly, the only single player experiences of Bomberman that I like think are legitimately pretty great and actually worthy of playing are uh, Bomberman 64 has a good single player campaign. It's pretty good. Um, Bomberman Pocket for the Game Boy Color, very good. It's a side-scrolling Bomberman game, and it's entirely single-player, but it works. It's a lot of fun. I remember playing it back in the day, back in the late 90s, and I had a blast with it. It was a great, fun game. Um, the only thing I hated was the password system. Once you got a game over, you had to enter a password, and when you entered it, you'd start at the level you left off at with no power-ups, even though you had, like, full firepower full bomb full everything and you, you continue with nothing like Gah! but no it's a great side scrolling game that yes you get the jump in you 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 place bombs they explode with the you know the lines the crossing uh, the, they explode oh sorry they explode with the crossing you know and um <laughs> um But you, but you move around and you jump. It's, it's really cool, actually. If, if, you, uh, if you're into Bomberman and you have a means of playing uh, a Game Boy, uh, of playing Game Boy Color games, whether it's the Game Boy Color itself or the Game Boy Player with the GameCube or, you know, the Game Boy Advance or whatever, um, Bomberman po Pocket is really cool. Um, another one that was good, and I think might even be, is probably the best one, is Bomberman Hero. Bomberman Hero is entirely single player. They could have had a multiplayer mode, but they didn't for some reason. But it works perfectly because it's like a 3D platformer, kind of like Mario. You, 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 it, it's, your basic command isn't just to drop a bomb. Your basic command actually is to throw them. It's a lot. It's a lot more streamlined for, you know, fighting bosses, for fighting different, for, 
attacking enemies from a distance as opposed to being streamlined for a multiplayer field. Uh, Barman Hero, I think, is legitimately the single player experience that uh, every Barman game should aspire to. I'm okay with modern Barman games having the top down multiplayer like they pretty much always do, but Super Barman R, the multiplayer is fun, don't get me wrong, but the, the campaign, I am not that into it. It's just not as fun being on this flat surface with these dumb AI and um, dealing with some shenanigans with the bosses and stuff. It's more fun to actually... What they should do is make a new Bomberman game where there is a multiplayer, and, and the multiplayer should be... You could either make it be the top-down like this or make it be the style of Bomberman 64 multiplayer, which actually is also really good. I wouldn't say it's better than this style of multiplayer from Bomberman, but I think Bomberman 64 also has really great multiplayer. It's fantastic. So you could choose between those two for the multiplayer. <laughs> and then, of course, like in Bomberman 94, which I had on my Wii via downloading the from the TurboGrafx-16 catalog on the Wii Virtual Console, um, there's uh, different characters that you can play as, like a cop, a guy with a mohawk, because it's the freaking 90s, what do you expect, a mohawk and sunglasses, you know, um, and various other ones. Let's see, uh, what else is there? Um, but for the single player, make it be like Bomberman Hero, but make it, you know, improved, you know, better with the times. I still think it actually Bomberman Hero holds it pretty well, to be honest. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, seriously, make the multiplayer be either, uh, I'll, I'll allow you to choose between this flat surface, this uh, top-down view, or the Bomberman 64 st uh, multiplayer, which is, well, that's technically top-down view, but it's 3D, you know, whatever. Anyways, that would be awesome. And then, uh, but but have the single player be Barman Hero. That's how it should be. That would be perfect. That would be the best Barman game, I honestly think. Because this style, work, this top-down view with the blocks and stuff, it works perfectly for multiplayer. But for single player, it's just kind of dull. <clears throat> I mean, unless you're doing the multiplayer mode as a, yourself against computers, maybe. But they're not always the smartest AI either. Sure. No! Pac-Man! It's the NES version, of course, and I've been critical ah. of this one before. Listen, it's not a bad addition of the game at all. I just don't like when products claim to have Pac-Man included, and it's the damn NES version <laughs> of the game. You're telling me I yeah. got horny for nothing? <laughs> the graphics and sound what? are just different enough to make this feel kinda lame. This is one yeah. of the strangest inclusions to the series. Pac-Man was already well represented yeah, on the Game Boy Namco Advance. Yeah, Namco Museum, I played Namco that, that was Museum, fun. The original arcade version alongside a handful of other Namco classics. And Actually, that one didn't even have Pac-Man. Oh, there's Pac-Man Collection, okay. It had Miss Pac-Man. I, I had Namco uh, Museum, that was that was a blast. I, I, I actually was introduced to Galaga and Galaxians for the first time and gotten used to, I, I had played Dig Dug in an arcade before, but I gotten used to Dig Dug through that and collection yeah, which has awesome Pac-Man and various other games <laughs> from the series. Both of That's these awesome. games came out well before the classic NES series released. So why would you get that so exactly? You say you could find them for $20 or less yeah, at this point. No reason so to get this. this just feels like a waste. Why no would you point. buy this outside of collector's purposes? There's no reason for this to exist. I think Nintendo did this one because it's Pac-Man. It's not like yeah. it's an iconic NES game, but I think it kind of helped bring more eyes to the lineup. Like, everybody knows Pac-Man, and it kind of reminds yeah. them of the NES era, so sure, I didn't need lunch today. It's like on the front <laughs> of the NES Classic Edition mini console box. Like, why is Pac-Man highlighted here? There are so many other games iconic to the NES that they could have chosen to represent. Yeah. Instead, did you say Pac-Man? <laughs> um, finally, we had Xevious on this day, another Namco arcade classic getting its NES version re-released. They added auto-fire to this version, which is kind of nice, but other than that, it's Xevious. Oh my god, finally. Well, at, at least, least this game fire. wasn't available elsewhere on Game Boy Advance, so good for me. I get it all to myself. But I'm an American, all right? If there's two things I don't care about, it's my morals and Xevious. This game was <laughs> far more popular in Japan, and while I think it's still fairly well known over here, there are so many other NES games. Hell, Namco or Nintendo developed and published games that would have made so much more sense for a classic NES series re-release. Mm, that's a too bad. game, it's a little too high score centric for me to consider mm. it worth the $20. Okay. Even though I think it's at the very least half worth it. And that <clears> was the first wave of the classic NES series. Cool collectibles that just didn't have a ton of value outside of that. The games yeah. they picked 
were so Excite basic. Bike was it made it a difficult good choice, to warm though. picking some of these up, which I think they tried to rectify this complaint <laughs> with the second and final wave. On October 25th, 2004, we got four more titles. First up, Dr. Mario. Oh, okay. guys, come on. Did you really have to put black bars around the artwork? Who cares? Most of the image is the artwork anyways. Just go all the way. Yeah, Especially the third done, party games I just went over. These just look bad. They Batman do. probably looks the best. Barring they cropped out most of the artwork and the original boxer would have just been so easy to translate it's not what over. It even looks and like Zevious. in the game. Well, they just didn't care. It's Dr. Like Mario is a safe bet being a puzzle game. <laughs> you doesn't for look sure like get himself. your time out of this one. If you wanted to play a Dr. Mario game on the handheld, this was giving you exactly what you were looking for. You could have gotten the original Game Boy version. Hell, that one technically sold better than the NES one, so more people may have had memories of this one, strangely enough. But for a game all about matching light colors, stay away. Though there were more ways to play Dr. Mario on GBA. In WarioWare Mega Micro Games, you could unlock the Dr. Wario game, which was fundamentally NES Dr. Mario, just with a few sprites changed. <laughs> and a year after this classic NES okay. series release, you could pick up Dr. Mario and Puzzle League, which included <clears throat> a much better version of Dr. Mario and another puzzle game entirely. The best puzzle game entirely. You know what? I'll say this was worth the 20 bones. At least at the time. I mean, this was perfect for the pick up and play style. There wasn't a Dr. Mario on the system natively at the time. The closest thing was an unlockable minigame in WarioWare, and that wasn't like a full port of NES Dr. Mario. It was a joke inclusion that could also effectively double as a Dr. Mario alternative in a pinch. And Dr. Mario and Puzzle League came out afterwards, so you can't really blame them for that. I will give this my full praises. It might have been worth $20. Okay. Metroid. It's kind of works with the black box design, no. considering Metroid oh, was yeah. one of the games that followed the template but use silver for some reason. If anything, this box actually might look better than the original. That's yeah, it can does. be hard to go back to, especially without a map system. Yeah. It's hard to know where to go and even There's no walk, point of this game, which though. Which is why I would recommend the remake on Game Boy Advance. Exactly. Metroid Zero Mission. It does a phenomenal job contextualizing that original NES game as a modern title. It has quality of life improvements without feeling too easy or like it's holding your hand while also featuring tons of added content. It's the definitive way to experience the first game in the series. And it came out in February of 2004 and included the original NES Metroid yes. in its entirety as an unlockable for beating the game. I yeah, guess this so is for no the point. people who there's wanted no to play points. the original Metroid on GBA but didn't want to put in the work to beat Metroid Zero Mission to unlock it. Honey, if you want to play Metroid 1 but not Metroid Zero Mission, that's your own damn fault. This yeah. is just weird. I mean, the version of Metroid included in Zero Mission is basically the exact same. There were a few discrepancies, like some sprites look a little different in the Zero Mission version, but... They're both NES Metroid. There's no true differences. It's hard to imagine Metroid not being a part of this series. I get that. But when you already released Metroid Zero Mission earlier that year, it just feels unnecessary. Yeah, exactly. If you were the other way around and this came out before Zero Mission, then sure. But no, instead, they're forcing me to bitch about it 17 years later. <laughs> bastards. Zelda 2 The Adventurer Link. Following in the steps of the Zelda 1 box design wise, this, this is one's more of a mixed investment. bag. According Zelda 2 to may not have been the most beloved Zelda yeah. title, but it's still a good game. It's just different and the amount of playtime you get out of it well, I think it makes it well worth the $20 price tag and finally yeah. Cat I've tried to enjoy Zelda 2 like I've really tried to but I don't know every time I've played it I just have not had a good time playing it I mean I can tell by what I, I can even tell by watching the AVGN review that it's a good game I can tell by what some other people have said about the game that it's good but for some reason whenever I try playing that game I'm just not enjoying it I don't know, maybe it's because it's just hard to get started on that. Like, even the original Zelda, it can be a little difficult to get started on that because it's kind of like open range. You can go to any of the dungeons first, but you don't know which one you should go to first kind of thing. And plus, I actually find the original Zelda hard when considering I started with A Link to the Past on Super Nintendo, and the sword goes, like, around like this so you can actually hit people diagonally, you know? But in... You know, the original, he just goes straight in front of you like this, so you can't hit anything diagonally, and it's, I find it kind of hard just because of stuff like that, but anyways, um, maybe I just, maybe Zelda 2 will be better when I get further in the game. Sylvania, the last classic NES series title, and another third-party one by Konami. Come on, guys. It's just <laughs> a really stupid cropping of the silver yeah. box art. Like, yeah. really? I think this is also well worth the investment. Castlevania was already in a renaissance on the Game Boy Advance with three original yeah, titles on that's it. True, that's true. It was followed in the Good footsteps choice. of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So that's there true, was yeah. still a void of classic Castlevania. And I think this was a great addition to the lineup. Yeah, that now, was a good choice. That's the classic NES series. For collectors, 
It's a pretty fun series. It's cool to have I didn't get any of them, though. NES boxes and great cartridges and try to go for them all. But for players, I just feel like there's not enough there to warrant a purchase. These games were just kind of <laughs> neat little novelties, but that was about it. The only games I think that you could actually warrant a purchase on were Zelda 1, 2, and Castlevania. But they were kind of cool releases just for the novelty alone. And just like that, Japan told us to go f*** ourselves. <laughs> These are the Japanese versions of the classic NES series, okay. titled the Famicom miniseries. They went above and beyond huh. Japan. First off, the packaging is entirely unique. Unlike traditional GBA game boxes, a clear plastic container with numerous cardboard inserts holding an exact replica of the original box art, now the size of a matchbox. The instructions are all folded up nice and neat. These just feel like so much love and attention was put into them. Even games that originally had different box dimensions on the Famicom, they accommodated for them. And games that released via the Famicom disc system, well, they have their own style of box as well. And because the disc <laughs> system games were yellow, the carts are too! The standard games have a color scheme reminiscent of the Famicom console, not the cartridges because they were all different kinds of colors. It would have been really cool if they used the same colors each cartridge was originally, but this is still neat. The games yeah. themselves, it's the same story as before, except these are the Japanese versions. But Japan go. got dozens more games on top of every single one that released huh. in America. Mario Brothers, Balloon Fight, Clue Clue Land, Wrecking Crew, mm. Famicom Detective Club 1 and 2, huh? Kid Icarus, The Mysterious Murasame Cat, Castle, Shin Onigashima, Super Mario Brothers 2, Mappy, Star Soldier, SD Gundam World, Dig Damn. Dug, Gone Bear Goemon, wow. Ghost and Goblins, Adventure Island, and Twin Bee were all Japan exclusives. And my Damn. god, why did we get Ice Climber out of all of these? There were so <laughs> many games that I think would have made perfect sense in North America. I mean, come on, yeah. Dig Dug, and you gave us Xevious? I know Dig Dug was already on Namco Museum, but still, like, why did we get Xevious? <laughs> I think this lineup of games does a far better job representing the NES, or Famicom technically. I think Contra, Mega Man, Bubble Bobble, Punch Out, River City uh. Ransom, Double Dragon, Tecmo Bowl, Kung Fu, those seem like they would have been easy to get as a part of the series and would have really helped to lock this in as the perfect celebration of the console that started Ooh. it all. But these will do. I have similar complaints towards why some of these got the re-release, like Mario Brothers? Really? That was included in damn near every Mario game on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah. And it was a much better version than the NES game. Yeah. Each day Nintendo re-releases <laughs> Clue Clue Land, I hear gunshots. However, the Famicom Detective Club games, well, those are huge titles. I can't blame at all, but these were great inclusions for Japanese-speaking players. Balloon Fight, yeah. I would have preferred compared to Ice Climber over here. There's just far more good, yeah. variety, basically, because there was more release. And they made sure you knew that by releasing these boxes. Japan's Jeez. Club Nintendo loyalty program offered these collection boxes containing wow. every game from the Famicom miniseries at the time. How the hell did you get your hands on those? And sliding them out, we have some of the coolest collectibles I've ever laid eyes on. Three volumes, the first two being the cartridge-based games, the third disc system. <laughs> Each one has this amazing slipcover featuring sprite art from the games included. Opening them up, we get each of the games nestled and displayed with a plaque. This is the kind of treatment I love to see video games get. This almost looks like something you'd see in the Football Hall of Fame, but way <laughs> cooler. Like, oh, that's yeah, the football Malcolm Butler intercepted in the Super Bowl? Like, who gives a shit, dude? That's f***ing Dig Dug. Now, this collection doesn't include two specific titles, Mobile Suit Z Gundam Hot Scramble and Second Super Robot Wars, the former being a limited 2,000 copy print run giveaway to owners of a Gundam game on GameCube, the latter being just a straight up purchase bonus for another GameCube game and buy that game, get this one. These ones were released later on after the initial Famicom miniseries wrapped up. Okay. I'm happy with just these. They've been some of my most wanted collectibles for a while now. I've always loved the look of them. And on top of that, they're functional. I have practically the entire Famicom mini collection by owning these. Nice. I can get used to this whole owning thing again. Well, that worked. We're gonna need more <laughs> stuff to talk about for the coming weeks though. Yeah, it's no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, might actually change my hotkeys a little. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and click that bell icon to add me notifications. Um, as for that issue I mentioned at the beginning of the video about. A strike on my video that strike is unfair because he didn't own the footage to begin with but um there's not really anything I can do about it I'll, 
uh, it seems. Apparently, he's the copyright owner of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But um, the, the thing is, uh, I'm just going to use that as motivation to make my own version of it. I'll make my own version of the uh, uh, of having the victory poses up, up and going, not having to download his footage since he's so territorial about it. Um, even though it's he's being territorial about footage he himself had downloaded to re-upload later. Um, anyways, um, that's beside the point. Uh, my wife and I still don't know yet if we're moving uh, to our own apartment. We hope we are. If we are, that will be awesome. That will be next month, November. We'll have our own place, finally, without all the noise and all the BS that's going on at where we currently live. And um, also, uh, there is a dilemma has to do with my car. I won't get into details about it. Um, but anyways, it sucks. What's going? Uh, some pretty horrible things are going on. I'm not referring to the strike. That's chump change compared to what's been going on with me in real life, actually. Um, but I won't get into it on the video. On the, on the video. Just hopefully, it doesn't prevent me from moving or cause anything worse to happen. But anyways, um, this was a this was a fun another fun video to react to. I know it's been a while since I've done a react video, quite a while since I've done one. Um, I was just kind of coasting on the <laughs> the uh, uh, added watch time of those two Smash Bros videos I uploaded, except for the second one that got taken down and given a strike on my channel from somebody who had uploaded it before but didn't own the footage while I added footage to the beginning. But anyways, that's beside the point. Um, what do you think about the uh, NES Classic uh, Classics on the uh, Game Boy Advance? I actually personally never played any of them. Uh, right here in Ronert Park, uh, I was at a private school, and there was this guy I knew. He's, he, he was a friend of mine then. I wish I found a way to keep in touch with him now but um god so long ago it was a mid two. it was like 2005 <laughs> holy crap but anyways he had the he had metroid nes the game boy advance you know the metroid nes classic on game boy advance and i just looked at him and was like you didn't have to do that you could have just gotten metroid zero mission you'll get the uh, on metroid zero mission they also have the original metroid there like i think when i bought metroid zero mission the original Metroid was already unlocked because I must have bought it used or something. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty funny moment when we, when I told him. I was like, "Oh, well, whoopsie." <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> one thing that's really cool is if we do get into this new place, I'll be able to record these reacts at home. I might be actually live streaming again. I hope, um, and uh, I'll shave for sure. I'll definitely do that one uh, after the move. But um, also, uh, I would also, what, what's it called? I, I also have plans to start an original series that I'm not going to get into. I'm not going to explain it. It'll just happen when it happens. When I, up, when I first start uploading videos for it, that's when it happens. <laughs> um, hopefully that works out. It will involve a green screen. But that's only feasible in a place that I can call my own. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell icon to add me notifications. Do you like this new Scott the Waz video? I certainly did. I enjoyed it. Um, I was kind of hoping for it to end sooner, but that was only because I'm starting to feel cold. Like, over the past several months, it's been so scorching hot here. And it was actually hot earlier today, and now it's, like, kind of cold. So I was like, Woo! Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out my playlist of other Scott the Waz react videos. I'm sure you'll you'll like what you see and uh, Check out the other stuff I do uh, I've uploaded to this channel as well and stay tuned for a more updated version of uh, Super Smash Bros celebration Super Smash Bros ultimate celebrations whether it's uh, victory poses or the victory themes I plan on actually 
doing some Photoshop to have different backgrounds for the victory theme instead of a white one. Anyways, thank you so much.